Good morning, avian adventurers. I'm here at the Oyster Bay Shoreline Park, which is a great local birding hotspot. So I said in my last update video that I ended March with 100 species. Without giving too much away, April has been a spicy month of birding, and I want to keep that going. Despite being able to get out birding quite a bit, it's been a hectic month, so I'm thankful to have a nice, quiet morning with some nice weather to visit some of my favorite birding hotspots. I'm going to stop at some of the locations I have done videos at before, starting here at Oyster Bay, moving on to the Oyster River Estuary and then going to Miracle Beach Provincial Park. They're really the best bang for my buck in terms of proximity to my house and the number of species you can see. Just anecdotally, it seems almost like we're in a second round of migration. It seems like we had kind of a first round of migrants coming back, those first warblers, but now it seems like some of our overwintering birds, like Golden Crown Sparrow, for example, are flocking up and are preparing to leave. At the same time, we're seeing more and more things come into the area. So today I'm going to chase some of those new migrants. I picked Oyster River Estuary for a chance to see some migratory shorebirds. Some of those small peeps are showing up, which would be new additions to the year list. There are also some new migrant songbirds showing up. One I'd love to see is Hutton's Vireo, and Miracle Beach might be a good opportunity to see that. So we are just under two months away from the solstice. This is the best time of the year for birding. I really just want to savor it. That also means getting out for sunrise is a little trickier. I think I did pretty well today. Didn't quite make the sunrise, but do get the beautiful view of the sun rising over the mountains behind me. So let's go birding. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's see some cool birds. So the interesting thing about Oyster Bay is it was a constructed breakwater for the logging industry and now serves as nice habitat for birds. So I'm just sitting on this log on the side of Oyster Bay. There is kind of a mud flat here, which is very popular with shorebirds. There were a group of several dowichers. At first there was just two, which is what I got footage of, but I think about four more joined them. So that was pretty cool to see. So that's a new bird on the year. There is this larger group of shorebirds down the beach. They've been foraging and then they kind of flush, fly out over the water to only to return back to the shore. At some points, those have been pretty close to me. So I'm just trying to stay here. Hopefully they'll come back. They've been kind of moving down the shore away from me. It's mainly a large group of Dunlin. And it's interesting because for both Dunlin and black-bellied plover, two species which have overwintered here, they are getting into their breeding plumage, which is really cool to see. The Dunlin, actually really both are quite striking in terms of their plumage. So in the group of Dunlin, there are some smaller peeps, which look to be, I don't know, either Western or semi-pollinated sandpiper. I haven't been able to get a definitive identification based on their field marks. It's obviously tricky, and actually the light is a little low right now. There's kind of an overcast, so it's not too great for picking out those finer field marks, but I have taken a few photos just to maybe see if I can pick out some field marks on my computer screen, but even just through binoculars and my camera, can't really pick it out too well right now, some of those field marks. And so they might just have to kind of go as unidentified Calidura sandpipers right now. So they flush. It's pretty amazing watching their flocking behavior. I don't know if you can see in this video from far out, I've got a few closer shots, but you know, it is this murmuration of them, and it looks so random in terms of their flight pattern. I'm not sure what spooked them. Haven't seen any peregrines cruising around, but you never know. And it really just seems like the flock can't decide where to go next. So the shorebird flock settled on the other side of the bay here. I'm not going to try to chase them. I think I'll have other opportunities to see those species. I think I'm going to move on from Oyster Bay here. Now these mud flats might be productive sandpiper habitat, but they do not smell good. There's a lot of sulfur dioxide coming off these bad boys. Now I'm at the Oyster River estuary. It's looking gorgeous, but not too much activity. So I'm going to keep on going. All right, so now I'm back to Miracle Beach Provincial Park. It was actually the first place I visited on my YouTube channel. So if you want to see what this place looks like in the winter, you can go back and look at that. Of all the touring I've done around the North Island, I'd say this is one of the nicest parks. So if you're ever in the area, strongly recommend it. The beach is beautiful, the right tide, and the forest is lovely too. So I'd definitely say check it out. So I'm going to spend the rest of my day here birding, probably walk through the forest, check out the beach. So we'll see what I see. 
Massive Douglas fir here. They're doing a little trail maintenance work over here, so it's a little noisy. I'll probably check out a different part of the park later. Here's some gorgeous fawn lilies. These fawn lilies are white, which I think is a different species than the pink one. The big leaf maple are in bloom. These are the flowers. Sensitive wildlife area, the tidal estuary. Don't go too crazy photographers, they say. So here I am at Miracle Beach, where kind of this tidal estuary area. There is some green algae and marine plants, which makes for excellent habitat. You can hear a black oyster catcher over my shoulder. That's one of the species I love seeing here. Incredible species. Bald eagle as well. It's not super birdy as I was hoping, but I might try to get a little close to the oyster catcher, maybe get some video of him. It. So I'm just creeping up a little bit on the oyster catcher, nothing too crazy. I do shoot with a 200 to 500 millimeter lens with a 1.4 times teleconverter, so it does have pretty good reach. And I often shoot on 4K 30 frames per second with my Z6, so I often do crop the images a bit. So if you're wondering about my birding ethic, I never want to scare anything for a YouTube video. I'm not going to pretend I'm some gear expert, but one piece of gear I do like is my Thermarest seating pad that I carry out in the field. It's nice when you're in habitats like this and I'm on kind of the sandy area at low tide and so you know I, I want to kind of crouch and put my knee in the ground and so it's nice to have that to just put on the ground just so my pant leg doesn't get too soaked. It's also great for sitting on if you want to get even a little lower. It's just nice to have in the field and it weighs basically nothing. So with that little bit of trail maintenance going on, I decided to check out the campground. Campgrounds can serve as excellent birding areas, especially when you're in early or off season when there isn't a lot of people around. They offer a lot of edge habitats, which often have high abundances of birds, and they also give you a lot of access to habitat. I'm standing next to what looks like a swamp, and it'd be hard to access that habitat otherwise. And also because there are roads and campsites without trees, there are a lot more open areas, which gives you more light for photography and also just seeing the birds. So great way to access a large number of bird species and to to capture them in good light. I'm pretty ecstatic right now because there are a couple black-throated gray warblers behind me. Now they are challenging to see, but I just got a pretty good glimpse in this tree here. Warblers are my favorite birds and this is a lifer, you guys, so I am pretty pumped about that. Now the challenge is gonna be try to get a little bit of footage here. They are high up, there's a couple chasing around each other. I didn't know they were gonna be this far north on the island. I thought maybe I'd have to go farther south to see them, but that is a sweet, bird. That might be a wrap for today. I might just try to spend the rest of the, my time here getting a little glimpse. They're high up in the canopy. They're in these dense cedars and I kind of have to look into the sun. So it's a bit of a challenge. There's two singing to each other. And they're just out of my reach. Well, I think that was a pretty good effort trying to get a shot of the black throated gray warbler, but I'm going to call it for now. Oh, maybe not. So it does seem like the black-throated gray, like the dense cedars back there, 20 or 30 meters. They've come out a couple times in the campsite here. The first time I had a glimpse of one and that really confirmed it as black-throated gray for me. Its call is very similar to say black-throated green or Townsend's warbler. So that's kind of why I thought it might be a black-throated gray to start. I didn't know the call off by heart, but seeing it, I did confirm it visually and then just as I was signing off, one came on the edge here. It seems like every time I talk, they kind of come out a little bit. So I might just spend another 10 or 15 minutes here and then I have to hit the road, unfortunately.
Well, that was a pretty excellent morning of birding. Any day you see a warbler species for the first time is a good day. I really love Miracle Beach, beautiful place. I've heard a lot of birds. This is a spot that I'll definitely come back to. There's actually black flies out now, which is a biting insect I'm all too familiar with, so that might be something to consider going forward into the season. I gotta run home for lunch here, guys, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, throw a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and stay tuned for more nature content like this. Happy birding, everyone.